that had pollinated the trees. So he is predicting, and this may indeed, indeed happen, that there could indeed be a complete loss of species around Chernobyl as a result of these uh, isotopes that are still decaying uh, that could wipe out entire species. You know, after all, it is a major bird transport area, a migration area, and we don't know ha what's happening when the birds come through, eat whatever they can find on the ground, and then fly on, dropping the berries further on uh, after they have left the Chernobyl area. The genetic impacts, I mean, radioactivity has an enormous uh, effect on genes. Speak on that. These are, are unlikely to be improved. Once you get a genetic defect, it becomes transmitted generation after generation after generation. So these defects that are occurring in humans, in birds, in plants, are unlikely to improve the species as they occur. What kind of genetic defects are you speaking of? Well, we're ta in humans, we're talking about brain defects, uh, heart defects, limb defects, children without arms, uh, hydrocephalic babies. In birds, we're, we're looking at changes in the feathers and in the beaks and in their brain size. We talk about bird brains. These birds are not as smart, and they're not going to be able to function as well as the birds that are not changed. We know that the plants have been changed irreversibly. You know, this is, this is not rocket science. We know where these isotopes go. We know that iodine goes to the thyroid. We know that strontium-90 goes to bones and teeth, particularly of the unborn. We know that cesium-137 goes to the heart and to the muscles. This is not a mystery. And if we know this, we can we can predict what the adverse effects are going to be. And indeed, they turned out to be just that, and it's shown, proven in this book. This has to constitute one of the, well, the claim that just a few thousand, a few thousand people died as a result of the Chernobyl disaster, one of the biggest lies in history, no? Absolutely. And they've been able to get away with it. I mean, we, we need to put pressure on the WHO to be, and the United Nations to separate the WHO from the IAEA. Not just on the international level with the International Atomic Energy Agency and the World Health Organization. Here in the United States, the, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has, too, tried to minimize the impacts of radioactivity. You're absolutely correct. And I can go back to the Atomic Energy Commission before the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. I worked for the AEC at the University of California in 1952. That was my first job out of college. And if I could figure out, with my limited experience at that time and my limited education at that time, that radiation was harmful, then other people could figure it out. We have had secrecy and lies to the American public for decades about the effects of nuclear radiation. There have been cover-ups, there have been uh, falsification of data, there have been people who said, well, don't worry about a little str uh, strontium-90, don't worry about the tritium coming out of the plant. Uh, we know that davis Bessey almost melted within an inch of its containment as a result of uh, poor maintenance. And I believe it's just a matter of time before we have another nuclear uh, problem somewhere in the world, if not in the United States. Well, why? I mean, you were within the, the nuclear establishment way back. We're talking about a half century ago. Yes. I mean, it had to do with money? Does it have to do with, with promoting a technology that these people are connected with, the nuclear scientists? Why the lying? Why the deception? I think it has to do with many things. I think it's the, the, the money and the control is on uh, corporations who are promoting nuclear technology. But we also have enormous scientific 
uh, ignorance in this country, people who really don't understand biology. I think if I lined up 20 people in a, in, let's say in a mall someplace and said, put your hand over your liver, I'll bet you half of them couldn't do it. And to, to, to explain to people what's happening with nuclear radiation, I think be, our educational system is so poor these days that children are not learning about biology and physics and chemistry. And it's essential because it's such a major part of our culture and our economy. As you plowed through all this data, the consequences of Chernobyl, did the experience back decades ago oh, connect in any way to what you were doing? No, oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, this has been known for decades. The adverse effects of radioactivity have been known for decades. This is not something that has just occurred in the last couple of years. I mean, scientists who have any knowledge whatsoever of physics can figure out where a isotope is going to go in a body or in a plant or in a bird. I mean, this is not mister, mysterious kinds of science. What does Chernobyl represent? I mean, if we're talking a million dead. What does it represent in terms of oh, technological history or the current technological scene? What does it mean? I think it represents very strongly that we cannot depend on technology, nor we can, can we depend on humans who operate and design this technology. Because the ultimate failure is human failure, as happened at Chernobyl. But you're talking here about health consequences on, on the most massive of scales. Yes, indeed. Around the entire northern hemisphere. Wherever the, the fallout was, people ended up dead. They, they wound up dead, and they wound up with children who were grossly impaired intellectually and medically. And this is going on. It hasn't stopped yet. It's still going on. Dr. Sherman, how can people get a copy of this book? Uh, they could contact me by email. I am toxdoc, T is in Tom, O-X, D is in Dorothy, O-C, dot J-S, at Verizon, dot net. And uh, I hope to have information on how they can get copies of this book. Yes, I think it's very important at this time that people learn the truth about what happened as a result of the Chernobyl disaster. Thank you so much for for doing this work, Dr. Sherman. This has been Enviro Close-Up. I am Carl Grossman. Thank you for watching. And to get a copy of this or any Enviro video program, just visit our website at www.envirovideo.com. This program was taped on March 5th, 2011, six days before the nuclear disaster in Japan began unfolding. The clear lesson of Chernobyl and now the Japanese disaster, all nuclear plants should be shut down. They present a clear and present danger to life on Earth. No more nuclear plants should be built. Taxpayer subsidies for nuclear power must be stopped, and we must embark immediately on an energy program of efficiency and full implementation of solar, wind, geothermal and other safe, clean energy technologies which are here today and render deadly nuclear power completely unnecessary.